Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We've got the chance for some strong storms to our south today, but a bigger chance of severe weather for most of the Carolinas going into Friday. So let's get right to it. We're going to show you the wide view first, and we can see the systems that are going to be impacting us over the next 48 hours. Here's the system that will be passing mainly into South Carolina tonight. So South Carolina followers, you're going to have the risk for some strong storms this afternoon and this evening. North Carolina, less of a risk. Uh, Friday, this is the system that moves across the entire area everybody gets a chance for seeing some severe weather with that system. So let's break down the risk for severe storms. So here is the risk for severe weather today, Thursday the 29th. You can see across Texas and then in the Carolinas, we'll zoom in on the area that we're most concerned about. It's down here in the low country from the Midlands down to Southeast Georgia. There's a low chance up here, but I'll be honest with you, it looks like good old fashioned storms. Risk of a severe storm there is 5% or less, so not a really big deal. So not overly concerned. Now tomorrow, Different story. Look at the risk. We've got a big area of medium. This is what we're going to see. We're going to see a line of storms in the morning over here in Tennessee, marching to the east. So in the afternoon and early evening, we're going to see the risk for some strong and severe storms as that moves in. And then on Saturday, that system pushes off to the north and east, and we see a low risk going up into the tidewater region. So it really can focus in here on the risk for severe weather on Friday. That's why it's a day we want you to stay weather aware. Let's show you the future cast and I'll show you some of the parameters coming together. So we start with today's uh, risk of strong, strong storms. We're dry this morning. We had a few pop-up showers, but you'll see as we go into the afternoon, this is around 2.30, you see the storms moving in. Now everybody will likely see some rain this evening. I'm going to stop this at 5 o'clock because I think this is the time frame most people will start to really pay attention. You can see some scattered storms in the mountains, but this is the area down here. So from Myrtle Beach to Charleston to Savannah, that's an area I'd watch for a strong storm this evening, but everybody will see at least a few scattered storms. You can see even through 10 or 11 o'clock, those moving through. Now tomorrow, this is where things get a little bit more widespread and probably a higher risk of severe weather. We'll stop this uh, right around after sunrise. This is about 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we'll go to about 10.30. I'm gonna stop this around lunchtime. So lunchtime, um, the speed of the system is the key part. So there's a little wiggle room on the time of arrival. So if we have time for the atmosphere to warm up and warm, humid air to surge in from the south, this line will have a lot more fuel to be strong or severe. So at 12, if it's just entering the mountains, that is not even close to peak heating. Peak heating this time of year is around 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Really late evening, late or late afternoon, early evening is when we see the worst of it. So this is around 2 o'clock. Storms are moving east, and you notice these storms are getting more vigorous, and there's brighter returns, at least on the reflectivity. I'll stop this around 3 o'clock. A couple things to point out here. Looks like to the south, we definitely have some kind of Boeing segment, but even in here, we could have some gusty wind and an isolated supercell. If it stays linear, it's going to be more of a straight line risk. If we see individual cells, then we worry more about a tornado risk and damaging wind. So this is four o'clock. You can see there's definitely Boeing segments. So what I mean by that is you think about a bow and arrow, the shape of a bow is like this, and then the arrow would be pushed through like that. These Boeing segments are an indication that you've got strong winds. The arrow is basically the wind pushing them out. And so you know you have strong winds in there. But where they meet up sometimes, like in areas like here, up here, sometimes at the apex of the bow, you can get quick spin-up tornadoes. So that's always a possibility. But you see it pushing through um, by 5 o'clock, and then it becomes really vigorous because this is max heating. Remember, 5 o'clock, as I said, heating of the day. So you see why central North Carolina to the Midlands might end up with the highest risk of severe weather. And this pushes east through the evening. This is five, uh, 550, basically 6 o'clock, and then all the way to 6, six 7 o'clock in the evening starts to push off the coast and we're out of here. Might be a trailing batch of isolated showers and storms. I'm not expecting much out of that. And by the time we get to Saturday morning, everything is gone. So let's look at that tornado parameter. Today, not much. You know, there's not a lot going on. We go into Friday. You see during the day as that system approaches, there's not a lot of STP or what we call significant tornado parameter. It's not really crazy high. So um, the tornado risk is not zero, but it's not really high either. I think this is going to be a straight line and hail risk unless the cells become individual. We'll quickly look at the holicity tracks, which show the potential for rotating storms, which mean both hail producers and possibly uh, uh, damaging winds and an isolated tornado. But you see, overall, there's not a ton of holicity tracks. There's a few here in eastern North Carolina on Friday and a couple down in South Carolina. But overall, that's not a ton of them for this kind of setup. You know, we, if we were more worried about tornadoes, we'd see a lot more of that parameter showing up there. So what we're watching for are two lines of storms, one coming in later this afternoon, 
the less, lesser of the two, the one tomorrow, you see it blasting through here in the middle of the afternoon. And because of that, on Friday, we want you to stay weather aware and alert because potentially mid-afternoon, right now the timing does look like noon to 6 p.m. for the Western Carolinas and probably 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. for Central and Eastern North Carolina. So that'll give you a quick heads up. And of course, stay tuned for updates. Have your phone uh, charged fully. Make sure you have three ways to get weather alerts for any warnings or watches that could be issued coming up on Friday.